welcome, welcome to today's information session on where is the market going? We're just starting to let people into our live Zoom meeting and we are streaming live on Facebook. So I'll just give it a couple seconds here before we really dive in. I'm really, really excited for this information session. This is a question that is on every single person's mind, whether you're a consumer, whether you're in the real estate industry, uh, you know, we've got some really good insight here and I'm really excited for this. So I think we have everybody in, which is great. Um, so thanks everyone for tuning in. If you are watching this live on Facebook, feel free to type us questions in the chat. We have someone monitoring. We can always answer questions during this presentation. This is again, a live information session. So utilize this um, or feel free to reach out to us after the fact as well uh, to get all your questions answered. So I'm going to welcome Mr. Nick Lacquiai, who is our CEO and principal broker at Mortgage Wellness, one of our great partners. How's it going, Nick? So good. Thanks so much for having me, guys. I always love doing these seminars with you. We ask, we answer so many questions. You know, we hit all the hot topics. I'm really excited for today's because I'm actually really interested in hearing the market stats from Peggy myself as well. And then we're going to show you some really, really great affordable options that are available in the market today. Yeah, absolutely. And as always, we have our wonderful principal uh, broker and CP CPO, goodness gracious, CEO, Peggy Hill. And then myself, Courtney Power Stoneman. I'm a sales rep with the Peggy Hill team, and we're so excited to um, be here. So we're going to go over the agenda for what we have on uh, tonight's session. So Welcome and housekeeping, of course, as always. And then Peggy's going to share some market stats with us. We are going to show you three really great real estate opportunities that are available right now and a breakdown of all the affordable, all of the affordable affordability. My words today, guys, are just, you know, escaping me. Um, and then question and answer at the end. So um, feel free during the whole presentation to type questions in the chat and uh, we'll do our best to answer them as we go along, but definitely address them at the end. So Peggy, this is your cue. If you want to continue, if you want to start actually sharing your screen with us, we're going to discuss market statistics and where the market might be going. Take it away, Peg. I'm so excited for this part. Thank I you. am too. And anybody that knows Peggy knows, like this is what she is passionate about. Like if you want to geek out with Peggy, talk market stats, right? Like I actually, like when I say to Peggy, like, oh, did you see that? I saw that listing. It's so nice. She's like, yeah, yeah, beautiful home. But did you know that that area is up 14% over last year? I'm like, yeah, but the bathroom, it's so pretty. And she's like, but the neighborhood, like, you know, it's just, care. yeah, exactly. Like she just focuses so much on the stats. Like you're just a wealth of knowledge. So tell us what's happening. Uh, so uh, thank you. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. So, I, um, I had someone ask me why I don't do uh, pre done slides. And I am a true believer in transparency. And the reason I do this is because they're not my numbers. They are the board's numbers. So anything you're looking at here cannot be manipulated. These are the numbers as they are shown to us. So this is why I do it this way, because I, I believe in transparency and I believe that everybody should have the same information we do. And that's why you don't get a pre-done slide of stuff that I want you to look at. So what we're looking at here is the last three years and sales price averages. So the reason I, I picked the sales price is because, you know, we saw a little bit of a blip um, in June, July, but obviously it's not, uh, not happening anymore. So the sales price are are upticking again. Um, our prices are holding. And I know everybody wants to know when the market is going to crash. And I'm here to tell you today that it's not today. And it's not tomorrow. And it probably won't be in, I don't know, six months, because we just don't have the supply to support a crash. And the number one thing you need in a crash is more buyers than sellers. And right now, if I take you to month supply, it's the lowest it's ever been. Innisfil has less than a month. Midland has one month. Aurelia has 0.7 of a month. And Barry Ontario, 0.4 of a month. What that means is it would take 
0.4 of a month to use up everything we have for sale right now. That's less. There's no more listings. No more listings. No more listings as of today. It's the, it, it doesn't get any worse than this, to be honest with you. This is. And this is, this is like the trend over the last two or three seminars that we did. We usually do them like 68 weeks apart sort of thing. And like, I, we've been seeing this every time, right? Like the, the yeah. inventory has remained low. I yeah. guess the only thing that has changed is we used to have a lot more buyers, right? Like, I mean, it was, you know, 20 offers and 30 offers on every home, right? So is that the only thing that's really changed in the market today then? Well, th that's the thing. The sales are down um, a bit but they're not down to where you think. So August, first two weeks of August, new listings, we were down almost 30%. Uh, total sales, we were down 30%. And that's year over year over last year. So we are down as many sales as we are listings. However, the difference is that we do have buyers right now. There are buyers in this market. And when, when things get this crazy in supply, the only thing this is going to create is bidding wars. Uh -huh. So I encourage people to list their homes because we haven't seen 0.4 of a month since, let me tell you when. So in March, when things were crazy, 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 we had 0.6 of a month. So it's worse. You have than less? We have less, less now. Oh, wow. That's what I'm wow. trying to say. The sales are there because I can show you sales. And, you know, we've had yeah. 262 in Barrie in July, 60 in Aurelia, 48 in Midland, 57 in Innisfil. Wow. You know, obviously in March it was higher. However, we just, we don't have the supply. So Wow. That's what's keeping our prices where they are. And this is why I'm trying to tell people, if you're waiting for the market to crash to get in, it's not today. It's not going to happen for a while because you can't have a market crash when you have no inventory. We have nothing. Yeah. We have absolutely yeah. nothing. Now, will we start to see then, Peggy, more, uh, more multiple offers, more, um, you know, that, 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 that craziness that we saw in February and March, do you think that will return over the next coming months? I don't think we're going to see it. We have seen it the last week or two. We have seen quite a, quite more activity, especially in Barry where the, the supply is the least. Mm -hmm. So we've seen, we've seen some of that the last week or two we're, yeah. we're, we're getting, I, I think there was a house on Madeline um, that got 43 offers the other day. Wow. So, so you, you are starting to see that craziness again. The only thing I'm hopeful for is that September, typically we see more listings. So September, we typically, when the kids go back to school and people start living their lives again, they start focusing more on what they're doing, where they're going. So I'm hopeful that we're going to get to see more listings come July or come September, which will cool, cool things off again. So again, it's always supply and demand for us. It, there's nothing magical about real estate. It's, yeah. it's two formulas and that's it. It's this one thing, supply and demand. Right now we have lots of demand. We have next to no supply, which is going to drive our prices up further. And everybody says they can't go any higher. They can, they can, and they have, and, and it's little blips, you know? So yeah. I, I imagine August prices are going to come out and people will have made record amounts yeah. of money again however and and then people say well why should i buy in this market like why would i buy in a market that is this crazy and the reason you buy in a market that is this crazy is that you're never going to get rates any lower you're never going to be able no. to afford a house more now than ever i don't care what the price of the house is yeah it, it's it doesn't matter if you can qualify, you should buy. That's really all it comes down to. And I'm pretty sure you can speak on that more than I can. Yeah. Now, if you go back, can you just go back quickly to uh, the average price uh, slide there that you had? It was like, uh, or the piece that you had there. Sales price. Yep. Yeah. Average. Yeah. So because this is one thing that you and I uh, talk about quite often, Peggy, we're both very passionate about. If you look at those prices, um, you know, on the right hand side where it says plus 26.9, plus 40.6. And um, is that year over year, Peggy? Yes, it is. It's okay. year over so year. Let's, 
Okay, so what, when somebody's asking what's happening with this market, what's going on with this market, um, you know, like these are conversations that we have daily and you have daily. Courtney, you're heading out to a listing appointment soon. You're going to have this conversation at that meeting. I'm sure it is a conversation that comes up every single day. And here's the thing. If we're predicting a market crash, which you and I aren't, I mean, the three of us are not for sure. But if, if, if a consumer is predicting a market crash, these prices are up by that amount in one year. So what are we talking about? A 30% correction, for example? If we talked about a 30% correction in Barry, we'd be back to prices from one year ago. Well, that's yeah. okay. Yeah. You know, nobody's afraid of that happening. I mean, let's talk about Aurelia, right? Like, look at that number. And I actually think it was it was more a few months ago. It was like up 60% a few months ago, I believe, right? Well, because you got to factor in that July 2020, we had already seen an increase. Right, right, right. So okay, that's yes. why the numbers look a little bit skewed right now, because we had a 40% increase January, February alone in Barry. However, these numbers are skewed a little bit because last July, we had already gone up in price. Yeah. So, I mean... Let, like, where is this market going? Well, it's going to continue to uptick for the reasons that you mentioned, the supply and demand rules. But, you know, what is the downside? Like, what is, you know, if, if people want to look at it from a pessimistic view and the market's going to go down, it's not going to go down to zero. Like, a house won't be worth zero dollars. No. So we're talking about a percentage. So sure. if, if the entire market corrected by 30%, these numbers show that we'd be at the prices of last year and those prices were already up significantly from 2019 well and and the issue right now is affordability so afford and I, I hear this all the time i hear it from my kids friends and they say we'll never be able to afford this market we're never going to be able to get into this market well i don't know how you're affording the live period because rents carry for more than mortgages yeah. So whatever yeah. you have to do to get into this market, you need to get into this market because the rent prices are so ridiculous, especially yeah. in the city of Barrie, which is like the number one highest rent in North America. Where did that come from? But again, supply and demand. Landlords yeah. are able to ask whatever they want and they'll get it. They'll get people fighting over it. They'll get more than what they were asking. So I get that housing is expensive. I get it. I'm not an idiot. I see the numbers. I get it. We get it more than most people because we go out to price homes and you know we were there last year and they were worth so much less. Like it's hard to change our mindset. Yeah. But yeah. rental is so unstable and it drives me crazy because people will move into a place, you know, three months later, the landlord's financial situation changes. He has to sell this house. Now you're back to looking for a house again. Like the rental market is the one market I don't want to see anybody in. So that's yeah, why yeah. I'm so passionate about people buying. And I don't care if the market is high right now. Markets are cyclical. In 2017, I, I don't know how many people said to me, this is it. You're never going to see these prices yeah. again. This is it. And if I show you the prices of 217, they're a joke compared to what the prices are right now. Because in 2017, they were over here. We're way up here. So it will come back. Like even if it were to drop, it will come back. You just don't sell. It's like a stock. You don't sell it when it's down. You wait. Yeah. And so I heard a great analogy yesterday. I was uh, had a, a Zoom call with a financial planner and, and, and we were talking about refinancing versus selling, for example. And, uh, and, and, and he was using the analogy, you know, you don't cut down the pear tree to get all the pears. You pick all the pears, right? right. And you leave the tree standing because the fruit will regrow, right? So you take the best of the tree and you keep continuing to let it grow. So, you know, you don't exit this market. You don't not buy in this market. You take the best of what you can get in this market right now. And you, you, you know, you squeeze the fruit, right? If you need to, if, if the market is unaffordable for your personal situation, you change the market. You move from uh, looking at a single family detached home to a townhouse, from a townhouse to a condo, from a condo to Midland, from Midland to Severn, right? Like you find the affordable homes in this market because I promise you it'll make money. And we're going to show you how to do that actually in the next session. And if you have to live in the basement of this home, then that's, that's right. If you have to rent every room in this home, that's what you do. Because at least when you're owned, you control your destiny. But when you're a tenant and your landlord decides to sell the month after you move in, 
you've got no control. You've got nothing. You're not growing your investment. You've got nothing. And life is about sacrifice. And to me, I realize that, especially I feel for my first time buyers right now, because they feel like they're, they've hit a brick wall. Well, you got to figure it out, figure it out, reach out to people that can help you, that can help you find a way to get into this market because it's the only way you're going to gain any freedom. And the difference between real estate and say the stock market is we need shelter. Shelter is one of the things we need. We have to live somewhere. So if you have to live somewhere, buy a house, don't rent a house, find whatever way Avenue is going to be there. But that's, that's why I'm passionate about it because I want to see people grow their equity. I want to see people put money in their pockets and I want to see people control their destiny. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a great wrap up. I didn't even rehearse that. (laughs) <laughs> well this is we always joke that peggy doesn't have to write any scripts or prepare any presentations or anything she just no. comes on and she just it's just magic right i, I wanna, magic. did want to comment on one thing we were chatting a little bit earlier about peggy and that as prices are really strong and inventory is really low consumers are also smarter than ever right now in terms of pricing so the homes that are sitting on the market are usually the ones that are overpriced. Is that your experience? 100%. And I don't know if consumers are smarter right now. I think consumers are more confused right now than ever because we have so much information coming at us from different directions. So I get on here and tell you that prices are so low or sorry, prices are so high. We have buyers and we have nothing to sell them. So you say, you know what? I'm going to sell my house right now and I'm going to price it way up here. Well, buyers aren't stupid. Like people, they have the information. They know, I mean, within a range, what things are going to go for. So we're not talking astronomical prices, but certainly we're talking 40% increases. But consumers, the one thing that, that I don't agree with is, you know, there, there is, has been a lot of greed that's come into this. And I just wish people would check themselves and, and realize that if your home isn't selling, it's priced too high. You cannot not sell in this market. This is the only market I've ever seen in my life during my real estate career that you want to sell your house, put it on the market, period. It's gone. That isn't always the case. But again, there is so much information coming into the consumer right now that they get confused. And I don't blame people for getting greedy. I get it. You hear it on the news. The prices have never been this high. It's amazing. You can get whatever you want for your house. Well, you can't. You can't. You get market value. And that's the beauty of the free market. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one of our viewers made a comment. uh, You know, he mentioned, uh, Peggy, your comment on house hacking is a really important one. He's been telling his friends, you need to house hack. So uh, we actually have an upcoming seminar in six weeks on house hacking. So we're gonna be covering how you live in a form- home more affordably as a young individual. So renting rooms, renting the basement, renting out the upstairs, living in the basement, renting out the basement, living in the upstairs, all kinds of great ideas. So we're gonna cover that separately, but house hacking, that is how you make it happen. I mean, I did that, um, I'll say a few years ago when I was 25 on my first home. Uh, maybe three or four years ago, I don't know, but, uh, but that's how I made it happen. I, we, we, we house hacked. I, I mean, we rented rooms, we rented the basement. We just, you know, and, and as affordability increased for us, as we got better jobs, we made more money. And, you know, I entered the great business of, uh, of mortgage brokering, you know, we were able to say, okay, we don't need to renew your lease and, oh, you're moving out. That's okay. We won't replace you, for example. And that's, that's house hacking, you know, that's, yeah. That's house hacking. So we're going to cover that in our next seminar, but um, why don't we move along to some listings? Yeah, sounds great. Nick, you're going to, Peggy, if you want to stop sharing your screen, and Nick, you can bring us up with yours. We're going to go through three listings that are currently on the market um, and available for sale in three different locations. And Nick's going to run through all the financing for you on that. If afterwards you have questions, I'm sure, Nick, you can reach out to Nick um, at mortgagewellness.ca. You can reach out to me, Courtney at peggyhill.com. We're happy to help with any uh, specific questions you have about these listings or others. So, Nick, I will let you take it away. I can see your Thanks, screen. Courtney. Courtney. You're welcome. Thanks, Courtney. Uh, so, you know, basically what we did was, you know, Peggy, Courtney, and I got together and said, what is the best of the markets that are out there right now? So let's take a look at, 
you know, the listings, usually actually we don't feature Peggy Hill listings. Usually we just feature, um, you know, uh, any listings that are just really great listings. But in this presentation specifically, what we're doing is we're showing three really great listings. And Peggy, I'm going to get you to comment on just sort of the areas as we go through them. Um, yeah. From left to right, you see Midland, Barry, and Romero. Okay, so we're going to start with the Midland opportunity. Nice, detached home, great setting, uh, newer home, I'll say. Like it's, you know, certainly, you know, a more modern design. Uh, it's listed at $550,000. This is a detached home with taxes of $3,500 a year, which is fabulous at $550,000 in Midland. I mean, it's not a townhome. It's not a condo. It's fully detached and it's in a great area. Agreed. So where is this market going? Peggy, you just showed us stats that show 20, 30, and 40% increases year over year. In this example, I'm showing a 3% appreciation per year. And if you held that home for five years, you'd make $70,000 on this home. Yeah. Now, 3% per year. Peggy, the stats that you showed us were 30 and 40% per year. Correct. So we prepared these numbers with a really conservative view on things. Like really what we wanted to show everybody is, hey, where is this market going? Well, we don't know. We know that it appreciated by 30% last year. So let's take one tenth of that appreciation and say if it's estimated at 3% a year for the next five years, the buyer of this home stands to make, I mean, a very modest 70,000 bucks on this property. And in addition to that, because interest rates are so low, I went one step further and said, okay, you know, we're going to break down the mortgage numbers next, but you know, just the, the principal pay down alone on this mortgage is $94,000 over five years. So, you know, what I did here was I took a really modest appreciation of 3% per year. And I said, well, hang on, even if you don't even get that Peggy, you pay down the mortgage by 94,000 bucks. That's the so, point. This is it, right? So if I bought this home, if I was uh, one of your son's friends, for example, that you were just referring to, and I bought this home, check out the numbers on this, okay? So $550,000, the minimum down payment is 30,000 bucks. Yep. There's what we commonly refer to as CMHC, it's mortgage insurance added to the mortgage, right? Anytime you have less than 20% down, you pay mortgage insurance. And if you want to learn more about that, reach out to pay your eye. I can teach you that, you know, inside and out, or you can reference back to our first time homebuyer seminar that we did. And we talk a lot about CMHC insurance and the need for mortgage insurance and why you pay it. But in a nutshell for this presentation, I'll tell you it's added to the mortgage. Okay. So 550 minus your down payment equals. Now, Let's just focus on this for a sec, because this is really like, these are the two things that I wanted to show everybody, the down payment and the monthly payment, right? So you put 30,000 down. I'll tell you what, Peggy, if I gave you $30,000 today and you handed me back $94,000 in five years, plus my 30 grand, I'd be a happy guy, I think, right? All day long. But, right. but, but let me ask you something, Nick, yeah. when you go back to the down payment, I want to make sure this is clear to people that mortgage insurance, you don't have to come up with that. That's just no. added to, to, added to the mortgage, to the mortgage that 30,000. Okay. So take me there, Nick. So I have, I'm living with my girl or my, my boyfriend say, yeah. um, and we both have jobs. Yeah. Uh, we don't have $30,000, Nick. Um, we have $14,000 saved yeah. up. Where am I getting $30,000? Can you tell me some ways I can get $30,000 or, or the other 16 I need to make up for that? Okay, I'm going to tell you, I hope everybody that's, that's watching listens to this one statement, okay? Nine times out of 10, a first-time homebuyer gets help from a family. Right. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, doesn't matter, okay? Nine times out of 10, that's what happens. And if you don't ask, the answer is always no. Because I can tell you, if I had a little brother right now and he said, Nick, um, I know it's a lot to ask, but can I borrow $15,000 for my first home? I'd say, well, what's, what's the arrangement? Like, are you going to pay me back? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll pay you back. Now, I know the market, and I know the market is such that if I lend it to him for three years, I'll probably get my money back. I mean, heck, I'll probably lend it to him. Like last year, I could have lent it to him for one year and got my money back, right? Yeah. So nine times out of 10, that the balance of that down payment or all of the down payment is being given by family members. 
where else can I get that down payment? Next day, my dad won't give it to me. Can I, I can use RSPs? You can use RSPs. So it's a great strategy. So, um, and maybe we'll do a seminar specifically on this as well, Peggy, but you can contribute to RSPs. If you are working at a corporate job right now where there's an RSP uh, contribution plan with your employer and you're not using it, you're leaving money on the table. Exactly. Like most large corporations, the post office, Coca-Cola, the source, uh, Perlator, I'm thinking about big employers and Honda and, and the area. If you're not contributing to your RSP contribution plan through your employer and you're looking to buy your first home, you are leaving money on the table. Because they will match your RSP contributions. I mean, there's literally no faster way to do it. So match your contributions, pay off your paycheck. You like have it deducted from your paycheck every single week or every two weeks. Have your employer match it. And then in addition to that, we can look at getting you an RSP loan to top up that and then withdraw from your RSPs for the balance. Okay. So that's like right. sort of, um, you know, Double way... Tip. Well, yeah, and, and way number two as well, that somebody can, can you know, save that down payment or contribute to a down payment. Um, number three is we have lots of lenders who have really incredible cashback programs. So the interest rate gets increased marginally. You get cash back that can be used for all of your closing costs. You can't use it for your down payment, but you can use it for your closing costs. You can use it for a, a, whole, a whole variety of things. We can pay down debt that allows you to qualify for more. There's really great cash back programs that can help save, for, help you save for a down payment uh, easier, right? Like if you don't have to save for closing costs or, uh, you know, uh, paying off your credit card to make you qualify or something like that, if you can get the cash back from the lender, it makes saving for the down payment itself much, much easier, obviously, right? And that's why I wanted you to talk on yeah. that. Because as a young person, and I hear it all the time because I hear it from my kids' friends, and that is a mountain to them. What they don't know is there's ways of getting over that mountain, but you need to ask questions and you need to ask the right people. So if I've got any first-time buyers listening to this, please reach out and ask because there are ways to do this. And don't let the fear of that mountain keep you from growing your 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 life and your destiny like this is this is what this is about you need to ask the right you need to ask the right people to help you get over that hump absolutely absolutely so you know an opportunity like this Peggy like I mean I can show somebody how to get their down payment together like right. that's you know usually the conversation starts with have you asked your family oh no I, I I can't do that I don't have that relationship with my family but have you asked like, cause you don't know, how about your brothers and sisters? Oh, you know, my brother's got a, a big deal job down in uh, Toronto. Have you asked him? Because when I talk to the older brother and I have the conversation saying, Hey, Matthew wants to buy his first home. Here's the help he needs. Here's how we can look at paying you back in a couple of years. Like here's the plan, right? right? The brother's like, I mean, everybody wants to help others. That's what this world's all about. Right? So family, like it, I'm telling you, the option is there. And again, I'll say it. Nine times out of 10, a first time home buyer receives all or part of their down payment as a gift from family or a loan from I, family. I love that you said that because like, I don't think people realize that. Yeah, yeah. We let our pride stand in the way of our future. Yeah. If you, if you are looking for a way to save your down payment, if A, you haven't started and you need some help or B, you've saved part, a portion of it and you, you don't know how to get the rest of it reach out, just send me an email. It's nick at mortgagewellness.ca. I will personally help you with that plan. I mean, that's what we do, right? So uh, not to get into the difference between banks and mortgage brokers, but you know, you walk into a bank for a transaction, you come see a mortgage broker for a plan. So, you know, I, I, I often say, Peggy, like, you know, somebody wouldn't want to just walk into a new home builder's sales office thinking that those are the only homes on the market. Right. It's just one option of many, right? So um, purchase price is 550. The minimum down payment is 30,000. Again, we chatted about that. If you're having trouble saving for a down payment, reach out, I'll help you with that. Mortgage insurance is added to the mortgage, okay? So let's not look at the mortgage required because in this equation, it's kind of an irrelevant uh, point. You need $30,000. This home with property taxes will cost you $2,400 a month, okay? Have a look at Kijiji and look at what, Apartments are renting for in Barry right now. Homes are renting for in Barry right now. This home would easily fetch $2,600 to $3,000 a month in rent. 
So is the cost of ownership parallel to rent? It's actually probably the cost of ownership for the first time in like my 15 year career and Peggy, probably yours as well, yeah. is uh, the cost of ownership is less than rent. That's, that, that's what we're seeing now. That's really what it comes down to. That's it. This is it, right? So again, we're looking at modest appreciation and principal pay down. This is just reflective of interest rates being so low. I mean, I did, I prepared these numbers, Peggy, using an interest rate of 1.35%. 1.35. So, you know, you combine a 1.35% interest rate with a 25 year amortization, and that's how you get this principal pay down. So, you know, even if, if things stopped going in the direction they are, like we didn't see the 30% increase, somebody puts down $30,000 and all of a sudden they're making 70,000 in appreciation and $95,000 in principal pay down. Okay, so let's just stop there for a sec. You put down 30,000, you stand to get $160,000 back plus your 30,000. Like, I mean, it, it, like the numbers just make so much sense, right, Peggy? They do. And my worry is that when the rates start going up, the affordability is going to come down. You won't be able to afford to get into these homes because the rates will be too high. And guess what happens? The rents are still really high and going higher because less people are, are being able to afford to buy. So yeah. rent, the rent is going to be even worse. So that's why I'm so passionate about people getting into a mortgage right now when the rents are or the, the rates are as low as they are and they're act, actually affordable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, a lot of people, I, I started with Midland uh, on purpose, right? So started in Midland, a lot of people will say, I need to go north to be able to afford something. I hear that a lot. And Peggy, I know you do too. Um, you know, we've been on conversations together with clients where we say, you know, why not Midland? And people will say, well, I commute to Toronto. I don't want to go to Midland. I want to be in Barrie. I can't afford Barrie. Here's a great example. And I literally just, you know, we picked this off your site. I said, how about this one? You're like, okay, this is great. You know, this isn't, there's nothing special with these listings. I literally just went on peggyhill.com. I went on our listings and I grabbed three listings that I thought were great. I presented them to you, Peggy. You went, yeah, good, good, good. Okay, let's do sure, that. I didn't care. So this is 675. The tax are $3,600 a year, $3,595. And again, over a five-year period at 3% appreciation, just 3% appreciation, there's $107,000 in upside potential at 3%. Again, I will uh, you know, just reiterate, last year you just showed us was 30% buried. Right. We're saying 3%, one tenth of that, right? right? So let's look at the numbers on this. So 675 minimum down payment is 425. It is a big number. There's no question. But as we discussed, talk to your folks, right? If you're a first time home buyer, talk to your folks. If you're looking to re-enter the market, you know, maybe you have RSPs, reach out. I can help you with those things. Now the insurance, the mortgage insurance, the CMHC insurance, again, is added to the market or permitted to the mortgage. The monthly mortgage payment is just under $2,600. The taxes are very reasonable at $299 a month. There's no condo fees. So the total carrying cost for this property, Peggy, is $2,800, $2,883. Now, if I walked into your office on Big Bay Point and said, Peggy, I have a really nice home on Western Europe. I want you guys to rent it for me. I want you guys to lease it for me. Now, I want to be um, at the top of the market. I want to rent it for $2,900 a month. Peggy, if you listed that home for rent today at $2,900, what do you think would happen? I would get a lot of people wanting it and it will go for more. Yeah, you get a train of people standing at your front door, waiting to see it, probably offering 12 months in advance and just, you know, uh, probably, you know, a few dozen offers to rent the property. So uh, my point is, this is a very affordable home. It carries for the same as what would you know it would rent for, with the investment of about forty thousand bucks. Somebody stands to make a lot of money on a purchase like this. Okay, so again, where is the market going? Peggy showed us where it was going. There's no inventory on the market, right? Like, I mean, we saw a year over year increase in Barry, and I forget the exact number, Peggy. Maybe you can look it up as I'm sort of chatting, but it was like thirty percent Barry, for example, right? So. 30% appreciation in one year, we're forecasting 3% per year for five years. Right. So very, very, very modestly, I'm saying 
you give me $42,500 as a down payment, you will make $100,000, likely a lot more, but just you know, to be very conservative, $100,000 plus the principal pay down on your mortgage. And all the while, have a very reasonable payment as well. Exactly. So that's cool. Okay, so all of those ones were done, you see, with this minimum down payment, Peggy. And we're going to bounce over for our last option to a 20% down option. Because I also wanted to show people that are coming, you know, maybe from Toronto or from a different market. This is like just such a cool option for a cottage. It's modern, it's cool, it's renovated, it's like steps to the water. It's in Rama, it's $899. The taxes are nothing. And even at this home, like, you know, $143,000 in appreciation over five years, even if we estimate a very marginal, like cost of living increase of 3%, basically, right? right? So if somebody wants to come to this market, this home is available. Like this home is listed right now. It's at $899. The 20% down payment is $180,000. This is a different kind of buyer, right? This is somebody who's refinancing their home, taking equity out of their home and buying a cottage. I mean, maybe they're just buying a new home. They're selling in Toronto, they're cashing in, they're buying this place. But still, with interest rates as little as low as they are right now, check out how this home carries $25.50 a month. $25.50 a month for this beautiful home. So, you know, this $899, you know, I don't want to go pie in the sky with this, Peggy, but you know, it's it's happened in the last two years. There's been appreciation of 30% a year. So if somebody bought this, for example, I mean, they could make this number in one year. Right. That's the reality, right? And, and the only barrier to entry is that down, down payment. And there are options of how to get that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So there's options to get it. And again, on this, uh, on this property specifically, like if you, if this is a second property for you, or if you're selling a home, for example, these opportunities are plentiful right? Like we're not seeing the, the 40 offers or the 50 offers on homes, like you mentioned. So these are homes, like I mentioned at the start of this, that are available right now. So reach out if you have questions. Again, we can show you how to save for your down payment. We can show you how to break into this market. And if you're looking at like a second home or a move from Toronto, absolutely, we can answer those questions as well. The market is strong. It's not going anywhere right now. So I hope we answered all the questions, Peggy. I think we did a really good job of it, though. Well, we were certainly passionate about it. So. <laughs> we were, we were. And look, it, we're one minute overdue. So um, oh. I know. I'll, uh, I'll Maybe I'll let Charlotte sort of, uh, she doesn't have to come on if, if there's no questions. But Charlotte, if there's any questions that have been uh, asked on social media or in the chat box or anything that you wanted to sort of address, we can do that right now as well. And uh, otherwise, that concludes the presentation. Awesome. Okay, awesome. I think that's it for today then. Peggy, thank you so, so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Always great chatting with you. Great info. Thanks, honey.